So today we've got a mini PC from Ace Magic. This is the, what is it, the S1. This thing's kind of neat. It has a digital display there that monitors a bunch of stuff, CPU temp, memory load, fan speed, CPU load, wattage, and uh, that can be customized from what I understand. But what I wanted to do today was take this uh, mini PC, which is a very uh, reasonably priced mini PC, but it's not gonna be like crazy powerful. Uh, the price range on this thing, depending on the uh, the storage option you get, uh, 512 uh, gigabytes or uh, one terabyte, it's going to be between 180 to $220 or so on Amazon. What I wanted to do with this thing was download a pre-setup emulation build to it and check it out. See if, hey, if we can have a decent little emulation build, mini emulation PC type of thing, uh, set up on the cheap. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's unbox this real quick and then get the uh, build downloaded, installed, that type of thing. We're gonna go with the CoinOps build. Um, you can find the build, whatever I'm gonna be using, in places like Arcade Punks. I'll put the exact name, you could Google search it. I cannot directly link it, unfortunately. That's just the way it goes. Uh, but I'll give you as much information as I can. And hey, I did it myself, downloaded it, and you could do the same. So. Uh, let's get into this thing. So here's a little Ace Magic mini PC. Has a little digital display right here. The one thing that I did like about this was uh, on the back here. It is a. Uh, it does give you all the specs down here. It's an Alder Lake uh, N95. We got one terabyte storage, 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM. But I liked how this is just a magnetic thing. Just bam. I like that. Very slick. Easy to get in here. The one thing I don't like that they did was it's single stick of uh, RAM, so we have 16 gigabytes, it's just one stick. They didn't go with uh, two eight gigabytes, which I think they could have, yeah. There's two slots there, so, I mean, yeah, it is what it is with that, but, you know, easily accessible. And you can add an extra, you know, M2 drive if you want. I haven't seen too many mini PCs in this price range that'll have two slots. Got the screw there, you could easily just pop in another uh, drive if you need to, so that's really cool. But there's all that, very nice looking system, power button. Input outputs, we got decent amount of uh, USBs there. Doesn't look like any USB-Cs, that's okay I guess, but got two LAN ports, two HDMIs, power, and then a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And that looks about it, some ventilation on the sides, looks like uh, these top, these panels kind of have a little bit of ventilation maybe, or at least this top one, there's some slits. I don't know about this one. Didn't really pay close attention, but let me get it back on there. How does it go on there? Dang it. I'll figure it out. There we go. Uh, you know, no, nah, not really. Just a little slit right there to easily remove it, but it, it seems like it has a decent amount of ventilation. Not a crazy system, so you should be fine with that. We do got to take a look at what, what else was in this damn box. I didn't even look. My bad. We're trying. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. What is this? Is this like? Oh, that's huh? What is that? Oh, whoa! That just like magnetic. I didn't. Oh my god! That's cool. That's cool. So a little magnetic stand if you want to do it that way. Because I think the way it's like orientated, it's got rubber feet down there. You would have it like that, and the little digital displays right there. So. If you want to have it standing up, see the digital display that way, you could do that. That's nice. Dang. Huh. Okay. And then we should just have a power supply. Maybe an HDMI cable. I'm not sure. Let's take a gander. Yeah, that's exactly it. Little uh, power supply, HDMI cable. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in and get going. Okay, so here we go. We've got the Ace Magic S1 Mini PC powered on. You see the desktop here. I have downloaded the CoinOps Legends 2 Bitwars build. So just Google search for that and you will find it if you're interested in this build. Uh, there's multiple versions out there, tons of different builds. I like this one as it's a smaller build. It's 256 gigabytes, nice little starter build. And there's a lot of cool games on it. Uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the fixes when not working folder. And I'm just gonna go to the all-in-one runtimes. And that should be all I need to do to get the uh, Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables installed, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we'll be able to start gaming. So we're just going to let that run through. I'm going to find a controller, get that plugged in, and then we'll uh, boot up this build and see what this system's capable of running. 
Okay, so here we go. All that is installed. So now back on the CoinOps Legends 2 Bitwars folder, if we scroll down, we should have the executables down here, the application. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click it. I got my controller synced up, 8-BitDo Ultimate. We're ready to go. Okay, so here we go, all booted up. I'm not gonna go through everything here, but I'll show you all the systems that are included. Like we have Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, uh, not complete libraries of each system, more of like a little compilation, little classics collection. But my thought here is, is like, since this is just a plug and play build, we didn't do any kind of emulation setup or anything. We didn't change any settings, just plug and play, get going. I wanna see what this, uh, mini PC is capable of. So we'll try some of the more demanding stuff. Some of these systems I'm a little concerned with, like maybe PS2, uh, maybe Wii U, but we'll see what's up. But yeah, there's a, a lot of cool stuff here, but let's get through this list. There is uh, some PS3 games. These are PSN games though. Usually these aren't too demanding. So maybe like stuff like Afterburner Climax will work. Uh, we have PSP, Game Boy Advance, NES. Master System, Atari, some old school stuff, Spectrum, Game & Watch, and then uh, just under 300 arcade classics. So let's go ahead and start testing some uh, games here, see what this thing can do. Okay, so a little Afterburner Climax on the uh, PS3, and yeah, it may be pushing it a bit, uh, PS3 on this cheap little mini PC, but I've been playing this game for a couple stages, and you know, you're getting 30 FPS on occasion, dipping down to like 15. Is it playable? I mean, it's up to you to decide. This, you know, this game usually runs decently well on a lot of lower end systems, but here, yeah, you know, it, it may be pushing it, maybe pushing it. Let's move on. Okay, so here's a little bit of a Wii U, very, very sluggish. So uh, beyond the scope of this, this quick video, but, uh, you could definitely go into the emulators and start making some tweaks, but I just wanted to see how this build played just out the box, plug and play on this mini PC. Like you don't even have to set up your controls or anything. Everything's just auto set up. So yeah, a little, quite a bit sluggish. I mean, honestly, uh, same thing with PS2. I kind of skipped PS2 because the footage was essentially the same as this, just very slow. But let's move on, see what this thing is comfortable playing. Oh crap. But here we go, a little uh, GameCube. Oh my God. I, I kind of figured GameCube was gonna run decently well here and we're at a solid 60 FPS. So that's a, a good thing. So you could definitely look forward to running GameCube on this system through this build or just, you know, GameCube in general if you set up your own on a little PC like this. So let's move on. So a little Sega Saturn, I've played a few games and we're getting some solid performance with it. So yeah, Sega Saturn's gonna be a go on this build. Looking great, playing great. So I don't even know why we bother because PS1 can run on your mom's mini vibe that's powered by three CR2032 batteries and it's gonna have no problem here as well. Hey, so we got a little PSP here and uh, this seems to be running very well. 60 FPS, that's all I'm talking about. So I know this ain't no Mario Wonder, but it's still pretty sweet, so. We do have a Nintendo Wii running decently well on this system with this CoinOps build. So that's a plus 60 FPS solid on new Super Mario Brothers Wii. A lot of other games have very similar performance as well, but let's move on. So Sega Dreamcast, man, running great. I've played a few games, got a little Marvel vs. Capcom 2 right here, a classic. And yeah, performance is great. So really awesome little system here so far. Uh, let's find another system to test before we wrap this up. So one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64, looking sharp, running solid. Pretty much all the Nintendo 64 games that I've tried played just like this, really solid FPS, looks sharp. So yeah, emulation is great for sure, but it's just gonna depend on your system on how far you could take it. And with this little cheap mini PC, we can kind of go the distance a bit, but there is a limit, you know? PS3 may be hit and miss, PS2 may be hit and miss, Wii U, that kind of thing. You're really gonna have to make a lot of uh, emulator tweaks in order to get some, if maybe possible, acceptable performance. But for the price here, uh, yeah, you could do some decent things with the system and it's a PC. So, I mean, multi-purpose. You'll get some light PC gaming out of this as well. Like a lot of indie games should run okay. But that was just all the purpose of the video. Just real quick, let's download this build test it out on a you know $200 or less or so 
uh, mini PC and see what to do. But there you go. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in the build, uh, the name is uh, down below in the description. And if you're interested in the PC, there is a link down below as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Bye.